Woohoo! It says we're live. Here we are. Live on YouTube television. Um, hopefully everything goes smoothly today for this little hour we're going to have together. I've never streamed on YouTube live before, though it is, uh, it's is—it's been pretty easy to learn. Um, I wonder if anybody's here in the chat yet. Uh, go ahead and say hi when you get here so I can make sure that... Uh, that we're live and uh, let me know if there are any issues with audio. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm sure you know our, our scheduled start time is not for another minute or so. Uh, I wanted to go and get started a little bit before that just to make sure uh, everything was going smoothly. And I'm, say, I'm seeing people say hi, which is awesome. Hi, hi, hi everybody. Uh, my name's Gary Arant. Um, and I am a game designer, uh, amongst some other things, at um, Stoneblade Entertainment. I've been actually working with Justin Gary, who is the CEO and founder of Stoneblade Entertainment, for um, over 11 years now. Um, so I've been uh, I've been around for a long time. Um, yeah, and uh, some some of our friends over at Playdeck asked me to. Uh, to stream a little bit uh, of, uh, of, of one of our games that we've made with them. And I was excited to do that. So, um, yeah, really, I've been looking forward to doing this. I hope, uh, I hope it's a fun time, uh, and I hope we get to have some cool games. I am not alone. Uh, I am joined by my coworker, uh, my longtime coworker now, I think maybe five or so years, um, and a friend and coworker who helped work on this set of Ascension that we're going to be showing you all today. His name is Jason Zila. Jason, how are you doing? Doing good, man. It, uh, it has been a while since we played uh, the sets, but uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun one. It's funny how quickly uh, the, <laughs> the the mechanics and individual cards kind of leave your brain, but then, uh, you know, you, you start you start playing again and it, it all starts rushing back to you. You go, oh, you know, it may have been what, I mean, it's probably been three years since we designed this set but yeah <laughs> it's been some time but yeah you were there every step of the way of course um you know playing games day in and day out as uh, i i got the i had the pleasure of being the lead designer for this set um and it was it was a total blast i think maybe as we'll find out as we talk through it more um and talk about some of the mechanics i think i think we had a maybe even a bit too much fun uh we couldn't we couldn't really contain ourselves we there's a lot of mechanics in this set and uh, it's, uh, yeah, so there's a lot to explain. There's a lot to do. But it keeps the game really, uh, I think games of deliverance are um, just really, uh, really diverse and really exciting. So I'm going to be excited to jump in here soon. I'm still just going to wait a little while. Um, you know, we just barely were supposed to start by schedule. Um, and, uh, you know, we have, we can wait a couple minutes and that way if I, you know, start to explain things to people who are watching who have maybe um, aren't familiar with Ascension or aren't familiar with specifically Deliverance, uh, maybe I can capture a little bit more eyeballs uh, in a couple minutes here. So going to keep just kind of chatting. Um, glad to see a handful of you in the chat. Uh, and I see somebody saying that Deliverance is their favorite set, which um, makes me really happy to hear. Thank you for saying that. And I'm glad you feel that way. Um, it's a set that I tell people is my favorite Ascension set. Um, I'm a little biased, as I said. You know, I, I was the lead designer for it. So, you know, you, of course, always love... Um, you love your own sets, right? Uh, it's, a, it, it's one of my... It's a baby of mine, right? Um, but I do... I just... I find it to be exciting, um, as well as skill testing as well as all these kind of different things that opens up some new avenues of gameplay that are not really available in other sets of Ascension, like dream binding monsters into your deck and kind of the monsters that you dream bind have a bit more. Um, some of them have a bit more of like a kind of getcha um, design, right? We usually in Ascension don't let you really mess with your opponents too much, but the, but the dream bind monsters break that rule a little bit. And I think that's kind of fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to play a game or two here with Jason. Um, and yeah, I think it should be a good time. So yeah, um, yeah, Kyle, I, it's uh, it's fun to pair with Delirium. We did that specifically. Um, 
Yeah, so Delirium is the set prior to Deliverance. Um, it has different insight mechanics, but uses the insight resource, which is a special resource in Ascension. It was introduced in Dreamscape. Uh, we brought it back for Delirium and Deliverance. I, I also got uh, had the honor and pleasure of lead designing Delirium. So, um, yeah, we very much designed them to play together and to give you a bit more content to play with your insight uh, insight mechanics and, and pair and, and have new sets come along for that for that reason. So glad to hear you've been having fun. Um, yeah, so cool. So it looks like we've added a couple new people to the chat, which is exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, I think maybe maybe I can start to ease in here, um, ease in here to some some basic explanations of um, of the Ascension app. The Ascension, the game Ascension itself, and then more specifically, Delirium, or sorry, Delir uh, Deliverance, which is it was kind of a fun choice that we made the names pretty similar. I get them confused sometimes. Um, Deliverance is what we're playing. It's the most recent set uh, released on the uh, app that Playdeck makes. Uh, fantastic company that we've been, we've had the pleasure of partnering with for a long time now. Um, they do a great job and they're uh, great to work with. Um, but yeah, you should check if you haven't seen the app, you should absolutely give it a shot. Um, it's on steam. It's, it's on a couple other platforms as well. If you search for on your app store or whatever, but yeah, steam, I play it on steam. I love playing it on my computer. Um, and, uh, I think it works great there. And, uh, yeah, if you get the app and you jump in there, you might play against me. I like taking uh, random opponents and seeing how, how people play the game. But uh, so, yeah, the app's great. We're on the app. We're on Steam. Um, and it's Ascension. It's a deck building game. Um, and it's an old deck building game. It's one of the originals. Uh, the original deck building game, of, of course, is Dominion. Um, Fantastic game, amazing innovation. Um, Ascension was one of the very first uh, deck building games to sort of innovate and take off from where where Dominion started. Uh, what Ascension introduced actually was this center row mechanic. It's a uh, six cards that are available for you to buy or or defeat in the case of monsters, um, and they the cards are shuffled and they're not presented in the same order any two times uh, because they're randomized. So the cards that are available to you from game to game actually change. That's the primary difference between Ascension and Dominion. Dominion has set cards each game that you set out and you see what you can buy that game. Ascension introduced this concept of the center row. Uh, and a lot of deck building games still uh, still use um, the center row. Um, it's, it's I think it's a pretty great and fun mechanic. Um, it makes the game have variety. It makes there be more interaction points between players because if I buy a card, you can no longer buy it. And it also creates surprise moments or high tension moments um, because a card, once it's bought, it goes away. Um, and so I think the center row is fantastic and fun. Um, Dominion is a no knock against Dominion, though. Fantastic, wonderful game. Uh, and so Ascension came out you know, over 10 years ago at this point. Um, and we have had many, many expansions that I've had the pleasure of working on. Um, I've worked on each and every Ascension expansion and product we've ever made. Um, and this game that you see on my screen right, screen right now is um, it is Deliverance, which is the 14th standalone Ascension expansion. Uh, we just released our 16th in physical form. In the app, we have now 14 um, and this is the most recent one. It is the 14th standalone Ascension expansion. Um, the basics of Ascension, if you're not even familiar with Dominion, might get a little difficult to explain here. Um, you know, we only have so much time, but it's a deck building game. You start, each player starts with the same 10 cards, but through purchasing cards from the center row or purchasing always available cards, like you see up in the top left here, the Mystics Heavy Infantries, you get a better deck as the game goes on. The goal being to buy even more expensive cards that are worth points at the end of the game, defeat scary monsters that give you points for the end of the game. So you're trying to kind of customize, draft a deck um, that you know has synergies and has power that scales throughout the game, and you try to really kind of you know ramp up your resources and buy a bunch of big expensive point cards or kill some monsters um, and score some points. You're just trying to outscore your opponents. Um, that's the basics of Ascension. Um, in each standalone Ascension expansion, we introduce new mechanics. Um, 
there are a bunch in there are a bunch in Deliverance, uh, but they're all really great, and I think they work really well together. Um, you can see a handful of them actually on the board right here, in front of you. So I can start explaining them. Hopefully, you're familiar with Ascension. If you're also familiar with Deli uh, Deliverance, then hang with me. Um, I'm going to just explain the basics of Deliverance here. Deliverance plays with a special resource called Insight. It's these little orange egg things you see on some of these cards. You can see that I have three Insight um, right now to start the game. The way you get Insight generally is these Dreamborn cards. These special gold cards show up in the center row. They, when they come into the center row, everybody gets, uh, gets an Insight. When you purchase one of these cards, you get an Insight. So just you when you purchase it, but when they show up, everybody gets Insight. Um, and you can do a bunch of different things with the insight. Insight's special because it uh, it persists from turn to turn, meaning um, you can save it up for future use. Um, most of the other resources in Ascension go away at the end of the turn. Um, insight pulls up, it saves. You can you can save for big expensive things like Pasithia over here, which costs 16 insight. It's off to the side. Every anyone, It's first come first serve. Anybody can buy this Pasithia if they get up to 16 insight. Um, and then they get this amazing card for their deck. You can dream bind monsters. Uh, you can dream bind monsters into your deck. Um, you can see this warp druid over here. It says dream bind one when you defeat it. If you pay one insight when you defeat it, you get the warp druid into your deck. And every time you play the Warp Druid, you'll get its reward again. Um, you can transform cards um, with Insight, like the Psionic Apprentice. When you play the Psionic Apprentice, it gives you this effect here. It can kill monsters of cost four or less. But while it's in your hand, if you want to transform it, you can pay seven Insight, which is a hefty price, to get the Psionic Paladin, which actually can defeat any monster. So you change the card for the rest of the game. Um, there are Phantasm cards... Um, this Black Watch Dreamer here, while it's in the center row, if I pay two insight, I can banish it and gain its effect. So I don't buy the card, I just gain its effect right then and there. If I'm in a pinch, if I need something, I can Phantasm this card, get a power, and then banish a card in the center row, and it'll go away to the void. Nobody can have it anymore. So there's a couple other things that we'll talk about as they come up, but that gives you an idea. You get this, you get this orange egg, insight. Uh, and you get to do all sorts of special things. You have to you have to plan out what you want to do. You have to be strategic about how you want to spend it because you only get so much. Um, you there are some cards that will give you extra insight, like this Void Amethyst Defender here. But generally speaking, it's a limited resource that you have to plan and use wisely uh, throughout the game. And that's really the heart of this expansion. In addition to the heart of Ascension, which is building your deck and the center row presenting you options for your deck. Um, so. That was a mouthful. That was a lot. Um, but like I said, there's a lot to explain. Jason's patiently waiting for our, for our fun game to start. Um, does, and uh, I'd like to stop, just pause for a second here um, before we get into the game. I know I've said that a few times. Um, but yeah, I've seen some people in the chat. I'm going to try to keep up with the chat. Please ask questions. Jason and I worked very... We both were in the midst of it, in the midst of this set. So if you have questions about this set in particular, we worked from start to finish on it. If uh, you have questions about Ascension in general, throw them our way. Um, but yeah, I have some, I see some comments in here. Um, is, uh, yeah, I see some comments about different sets of, uh, of, of Ascension. There's a lot to choose from. So some of them, uh, some people don't like some, some people like others. I, I feel the same way, frankly. Um, so yeah, the, the fun thing about Ascension is you have a lot to choose from. Uh, but yeah, and you own all of Dominion. Yeah, it is a beautiful game. It's a fantastic game, uh, Malcor. Um, yeah, so Dreamborn monsters are great. I agree. Uh, it's one of my. Uh, it's uh, Dreambind monsters are one of my favorite mechanics, um, and I I love them very much because it's fun when you're killing monsters to be able to like get a couple extra cards for your deck, which is usually the drawback of of fighting monsters, is your your scoring points more than you're building your deck. So. Great, I'm caught up on the chat. I've explained exhaustively uh, a little bit of what's going on here. Um, and I think that means we're ready to get in the game. Uh, Jason and I are in this game together on the Ascension app that you can get in Steam. Um, and uh, it's your turn to start the game, Jason. So uh, we each start with the same 10 cards. It's, uh, I believe it's eight apprentices, which gives you one rune to spend on cards, uh, two militia, which gives you one fighting, uh, which gives you one fighting power to, to fight monsters and one dream seeker, which is a special starting card in, 
Um, in Delirium as well as Deliverance, we added this to the starting deck to kind of to kind of grease the wheels to give everybody access to a little bit of insight because you know sometimes it, it, all these things, all these cool mechanics, if you don't have any any insight, it can feel pretty frustrating. So we wanted to have a little bit in the game to like help help just kind of give people a baseline of insight generation. So, Jason, what do you got? What's your starting hand? All right. Well, let's start with the Dream Seeker to gain insights and like we got uh, three rooms. Three rooms, and, yeah. yeah. So, um, the option here is, you know, I love a good banish, so Black Watch Dreamer. Uh, so I have the option of paying two insight to actually banish a card from my hand, but I played my hand, so I'm just going to purchase this. We'll go. Oops. All right, purchasing All right. the Black Watch Dreamer, I like it. Get a little yeah. banishing early in the game. You know, I love a good banish. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then, so when I purchase the Void Amethyst Defender, that will give me an insight as well. Yep. Uh, so I got two Void cards now, which is great. Um, and then I have, uh, yeah, I can kill this Knight Marauders and get another insight and an honor. Yeah, one point. That's a star number. Uh, mm -hmm. One insight. So that's a pretty sweet turn. A couple of yeah. Void cards. Got yourself a two-cost monster. Exciting. That was not too shabby. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to start with my Dream Seeker. It draws me a card, so I kind of need to play it to see what my options are. Um, and there are some interesting options. I think I'm just going to go straight for this Psionic Apprentice, though. Uh, it's a really powerful card. If I want to save up to 7 Insight and get this thing that can kind of just start yeah. churning out monster kills, or, you know, it could... Uh, if I'm lucky and I draw it before you're able to kill this Dread Mage, it could give me access to the Dread Mage, which is one of my favorite cards in the whole set. Um, I also love the art. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's one of these Dream Bind monsters uh, that if I bind it into my deck every time I draw it, it's going to give oh, me yeah. two honor and draw two cards. It is fantastic. So I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to be able to buy that. So I'm going to buy the Psionic Apprentice. The last card in my hand is a Militia. One power doesn't do anything for me. I can't even kill the measly cultist that's always available for you to kill. So, my turn's done. All right. Well, I have five ruins here. So, my options are, I guess, the gears here. Let's see here. That seems to make sense. Although, yeah. I'm mixing my, getting a little mixed bag here. I already have yeah, yeah. one card that's providing two power. Um... Yeah, Jason says mixing mix in the bag, which is our which is our fun way of talking about the game. Is generally speaking, it of course will change from game to game and situation to situation, but there is kind of a principle at play in Ascension, and that's you generally want to prioritize building your rune resource production or your power resource production. The reason being, there'll be expensive cards, really powerful expensive cards that will show up at some point, like cost six, seven, eight runes, six, seven, eight power. And if you kind of mix what your deck is doing, you get some power, some runes, it's going to be unlikely that you put a hand together that can spike one resource or the other to the higher costs. So usually you kind of want to try to lean one way or the other. Um, and Jason bought some power cards already. This Gear Seer is a five coster. It gives three runes though, which is a pretty powerful effect. So it'll yeah. help spike your runes all by itself. You don't need much help other than that. Yeah, so that seems to make sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the Gear Seer. And, ooh, look at that. Another uh, intro phantasm. All right, I'm done. All right. Ooh, two intro phantasms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I love Intra Phantasm. It is a great one-cost card. It is one that people usually bring up to me oh, when they find no. out that we, you know, that I had a big hand to play in this set. They they tell me that this card, Intra Phantasm, is broken. They tell me. I'm not sure I agree, but it is sweet and good. Um, all right. I and here's here's kind of what we were just talking about. I have two runes. Uh, which the only thing I can do with the two runes is buy heavy infantry. I have a uh, psionic paladin that's going to help me kill monsters. I have the phantasms that I want to unite. So heavy infantry to me is pretty borderline here. I think 
I personally am going to go with not buying a heavy infantry because I want to make sure the things that I'm excited about doing will come up more often, even though I think maybe technically there's a slight advantage to taking the heavy infantry here for my final score. But I'm going to prioritize a little fun, which might seem weird to certain player types, but I like to... I like to hedge that way because I want to unite my cards. I want to draw my psionic paladin. and I don't need this heavy infantry gumming my deck up. Makes a lot of sense. And yeah, the artwork for Dread Mage is awesome. All right. Yeah. A lot of cool, a lot uh, of cool art in this. Shout out to George Rockwell. I don't know if mm -hmm. he's watching right now, but he's, he was, this was the second set that we had him on board doing art direction for it. And uh, I think he did an amazing job. Yeah. Fantastic job. All right. I'm going to play dream seeker here. Ooh. Okay. Well, Guts, two militia again. And the guts, three apprentices. So, I guess I'm killing the night marauder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're scooping up all those night marauders. Yep, I am. But Ooh. let's see here. Look at that. Three to purchase here. Oh, Pasithia's hmm. katana. This is one of. This is a story. This is a cool story to this card. It says uh, this count, construct counts as all factions. That's because it's Pasithia's. And when you play this, draw a card. So it's a construct that will stay in play, and it just kind of gives you a card back. It's worth four points at the end of the game, which is really nice. Um, and it says Pasithia costs you four insight less to acquire. So if you manage to buy the katana and put it in play, this hefty price of Pasithia that I talked about earlier will go from 16 down to 12. She has four weapons, you can see in her art. If you manage to gather all four of her weapons and put them in play, Pasithia will be free. Well, I have the option here to Phantasm the Aether Warrior to draw two cards. Ooh. Um, but I don't know what that really spikes me to, so... I don't think I'm supposed to do it. Yeah, um, it seems a little risky yeah. um, to use so much of your insight. Mm -hmm. You'd be hoping for what, like a couple of power cards to get one of these Dread Mages, yeah. but then you would have used enough of your insight to not be able to bind the Dread Mage, which is really part of the exciting aspect exactly. of killing the Dread Mage. So I guess it is just going to be get another insight from Control Smith, and hopefully I can transform a construct. Yeah. Ooh. Oh no, that is exactly what Gary wants right there. <laughs> oh, that is so bad for me. Oh, this is this is getting exciting because the Werebor is pr a pretty overpriced heavy infantry um, unless you have other lifebound cards to use this Unite. Unite means if you play this card on the same turn that you play another lifebound, the green cards, you'll get this effect. And if you Unite war Werebor, it is very good for its cost. It goes from being very, uh, very poor for its cost as two power for four to an excellent, excellent card. So, and it just so happens that I have four runes to buy it. Um, so that uh, couldn't really, couldn't really work out better for me, actually. It's like I scripted it this way. Okay, so now I have a really interesting decision. Um, Unfortunately, my banished card, both of my void cards are in the bottom three, so I was leaning towards actually burning the Aether Warrior. Uh, but now, let's see. At least I would have a chance of drawing them and banishing my one of my militias in mm -hmm. that world, and I would get some power. Um, but I think, since I have three, four, six... Yeah, I only have... Five uh, ruins, so I can't actually purchase both of those. You know what? You're going for I'm it? Gonna, Getting antsy? Gonna do it. I think I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So, yeah, so paying five okay. of your nine insight to draw two cards, also making it so that I don't have access to the Aether Warrior, right? So you're. Um, All right. So, how do I do this without, cost, without purchasing this thing? Um, probably double click it or. Yeah. Okay, cool. Double yeah. click it. Yep. And then I will phantasm this. Probably come back to haunt me here. Yeah, we're probably two of the only people in the whole world that have played way more physical Ascension than digital Ascension because we're always making the sets. Uh, everybody else I talk to is like, oh, yeah, I only play on the app. <laughs> okay, that was unfortunate. My last card is my banished card. Um, so that's a little sad. But... I did draw, I guess I could purchase both of these uh, these uh, Pasithia items, which would be nice. It gets mm -hmm. me the discount back. Um, yeah. Or what does this do? This turn to acquire, defeat a monster, both in the center of game two. 
Okay, so I've already... No, that's plunder. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, Psytheus Katana. Mm -hmm. And then we have four again, which we're just gonna go all in on this. Let's go. Just Psytheus. going for the, I like I like getting two Psytheus yeah, yeah, weapons. Let's go. It goes from 16 right. insight down to eight, which you're already almost there basically. So it's pretty fantastic. Oh my goodness. Talk about fantastic. How about intro oh, no. phantasms? You love to see <laughs> oh, it. Oh no, another one. <laughs> oh my goodness. And of course they're together there. Nice. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. This is, this is going swimmingly. I'm just going to play. Actually, I'm not going to transform. Oh. I'm going to dream bind. I'm doing it all, you know. Goodness gracious. I'm going to phantasm the invocist. I'm just going. I'm just going, you know. Just Why stop? On. Why stop when you can have a turn like this, you know? So you just have a million draw cards in your deck now? <laughs> well, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to bind the second First one. mage, okay. right? So, um, you, um, have, you have three intro phantasms also, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. This is not looking good. Yeah, this is a huge turn right off the bat. It's, uh, the main character of this stream is, is doing well, which is fantastic. <laughs> what do you think, chat? Those of you in the chat, how do you feel about, um, about our friend Jason's chances here after, after seeing how fortunate my first couple of turns have gone? I'm interested to know. Jason is better at the game than me, I'll have you know. He, if anybody can pull this out, it's Jason. <laughs> mm, I wouldn't say that, but we'll see. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a Zelda themed T-shirt. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I like this T-shirt a lot. I, I got it online, random normal store. But yeah, it's a cool one. Mm. What do I do here? I guess I don't have this, so I have Control Smith for two runes. This is not a great hand. Mm. Gotta get dunked by the insight printer. What's the insight printer? I just have a bunch of I, I have a bunch of insight, yeah. I am print I basically printing insight, I see. Alright, I guess it is going to be <laughs> Yeah, I think so too. I think it's gonna be me. Okay, that's a nine. And my option here is to banish my militia, which I can use to kill the Night Marauders. I guess I'll just banish an apprentice. Like, I would like to get my hands on this ranger here. There you go. All right. Intern. So I don't have enough for the Ranger or the Aether Warrior on my own. Um, you don't have either of your Pasithia constructs in play yet. Um, but I think I'm just... I, I'm not going to let this one get away from me. I have a pretty good lead. I think I'm going to Phantasm the Aether Warrior and just hope to put some Unites together. Okay, I didn't, I didn't end up doing that, but I took the Aether Warrior away from you, and I, and yeah. I was able now to buy the... The ranger, which is what I was looking for. Um, maybe I can get my hands on the second ranger now if you're not able to get it. So, not not ideal. If I could have put together some some more unites, that would have been exciting. But alas, okay. uh, we're not seeing Jason's score in insight. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get my OBS to crop it more properly. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, an issue with my. Uh, my OBS windows right now. I'm I'm certainly I wouldn't call myself a, a uh, I wouldn't call myself an expert streamer by any stretch. So I apologize if I can't get it figured out. Jason currently has 11 insight and four honor. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to purchase the ranger. Yeah, you got to take the ranger yeah, away from me, right? From you. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that is pretty clear. Um, shoot, dang, I'm getting unlucky, Jason. 
I uh, I I have my intro phantasm in no unite. Oh, I it's feel for you. Extremely unlucky. Um, what am I gonna do this turn? I'm probably just gonna make some runes and call it a day. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this warp druid with my psionic apprentice. I'm gonna banish an apprentice out of my discard pile. There isn't a ton of honor out of the honor pool. I'm tempted to bind the Warp Druid, but I just want to draw through my deck, um, which eventually it'll banish cards and help me do that, but I just want to unite my card, so I'm going to actually pass up on it. Makes sense. It could have been, could have been the wrong choice, but... Uh, um, all right, I'm going to banish this Militia from my hand with the Channeler, uh, and now I have four runes. Uh, I'm going to be able to trigger my plunder, which is if this turn I acquire and defeat a monster in the same in the center row in the same turn, I get in this case in the case of this card I get to insight. I've already killed the monster with my mm -hmm. apprentice. What do I want? Um, I do like this demon hunter card, pretty powerful. I do think I need to find something to dump some insight into. Um, Eight is a lot, though. Uh, let's just go with this construct. Hmm. I think I can just start to uh, get some constructs. That way, once you get a construct out, it's not gumming up your deck, so it's not going to hurt my chances to unite cards. So I think that's kind of what the kicker was for me at the end there. My right, fa so Sorry, I'm just going to answer some yeah, chat. No um, my favorite faction, and Jason, you can tell us your favorite faction after, after me. It, it changes from set to set for sure. Um, the way we have the faction set up, I think it's uh, Enlightened is often my favorite faction or my least favorite faction, depending on how we execute the faction. And then uh, I generally lean towards Lifebound. I like Unite. Um, I like gaining honor directly. Um, and I like kind of trying to purchase cards as well as defeat monsters. And Lifebound is the faction that gives you a little bit of runes and a little bit of power. So that's generally where my favorites lie. Um, Jason, do you have a favorite Ascension faction? Yeah, I think uh, I, I'm also in Lifebound. Yeah, I like a lot of you know what you already stated. Yeah. It just uh, has the potential to, to have some big turns, drawing cards, syncing cards up together, a lot of synergies, mm -hmm. gaining honor. Yeah, Yeah, it kind of does a little bit of everything, which everything. is always fun. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when it comes together, it just feels so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's we a fun one. We know Justin's would be a void for because he loves a banish. He loves a good banish, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm up here. Let's see here. So I actually have an interesting decision. I could acquire Pasithia right now. Oh, yeah. Um, so it seems like it would make sense to put this directly in my hand. So let's see. Put in hand. Let's do it. All right. All right, Jason went with Pasithia. So you can see it's gone. I can no longer get Pasithia. And I think Pasithia goes right to your hand. Is that right? Yes, it does. Whew. Yep. And yeah, I guess maybe it was... Yeah, maybe I should have waited until I got my other constructs that would have discounted me another four. is probably the right one to do. But we are here. So let's see here. So now I'm going to draw... Yeah, so you only got the four discount. But, you know, mm -hmm. getting, getting Pasithia now... Um, you know, is is definitely worth something, right? It's going to... Mm -hmm. uh, cool. So I get the Serenity uh, effects here. So I get two insight for having nothing in my discard pile. Mm. Which is pretty sweet. Um, and so let's just start playing some cards here. Three, four. So we got six. I probably need to purchase good old root here. I can't let you have that one. That would be a disaster for me, I think. So we'll go ahead and take him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then, I guess, do I want another banish card? Let's see. I've got three. I guess I can just phantasm this, right? Let's do that. Um, so we'll just double-click this. Phantasm will banish. Mm-hmm. A little more banishing. Yeah, let's see what we want to get rid of here. Sure. Um, do I want to get rid of that, actually? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So we'll get rid of my militia. Um, and then I'm just going to 
purchase the other void amethyst defender. It seems pretty insight. Seems good for your deck. Ooh, and then the, that monster that flipped. Not too shabby. And then we'll defeat this for some honor. So that was not a bad turn. No, you're All doing right. well. I, I think we were talking about that it seemed like I was pretty advantaged. I think I am for sure with the lifebound mm -hmm. stuff. But you have you have stuff going on. A lot of points in your deck, too, with the two um, uh, Pasithia constructs, right? Yep. Um, let's see. I'm about to shuffle my discard pile. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that should be holding me back from doing that. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. Um, I have eight insight. I have this this transform construct. I don't know if it's worth it. Though if I want to transform it, I better make that choice up front, you know? Like get the honor going. Mm. So I think, I think I'm going to transform it. I'm going to transform it. There is another transform mechanic construct now, so I can pair it with that and kind of get that other, you know, in addition to my lifebound stuff, I can kind of get that going as well. So I am just going to go straight for it. Definitely is one of the better cards for me right now. And again, I'm faced with this heavy infantry decision. And I, I don't want to mess my game up here by just turning points down. Hmm... I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna buy it this time. I think it's time. I'm not gonna shuffle for a little while, so we'll see if that if that heavy infantry comes to bite me. You know. <laughs> All right. So I have go ahead and banish a card here. Oops. Um, I guess I put my militia. Yeah, so what the Mechanic Constructs are doing this set is they they all transform, so they do nothing until they transform. They're a really cool story that I'll talk about in a second, too. Another shout-out to George Rockwell. If, I don't think he's watching, but shout-out where shout-outs are due. Um, so the Mechanic Constructs are these transforming constructs. They come into play. They're still worth a bunch of points, right? Um, but you have to pay insight to transform them. They all cost five to transform, except for the biggest one. Um, and... Uh, when they transform, they, they are better based on how many transformed mechanic constructs you have. So you really have to invest in them if you want them to be good. Um, and uh, the story of them is that they're these blueprints, right? Uh, there's this character, Emma... Uh, um, I'm blanking on her last name, Emma Ironheart. Ironheart. And she's building her space. She's building her airship to escape the dream, uh, the dreamscape. And uh, you get, you, you start out as blueprints, but if you get enough insight, you'll transform them into real parts of her airship, which I think is a really neat story. All right. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do this turn is, uh, is I'm going to buy this channeler because I need a sixth insight so that I can transform my ranger into a lichen beast. Ow! And I unite. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think I kill the terminites, make you kill a construct. I'm going to banish um, my last apprentice here. Uh, I am going to pick up a Mystic, and I'm going to buy a Gear Seer. I'm going to destroy one of these. It's going to be one that draws me a card. Yeah. Mostly just protecting my own construct more than anything else. Okay, so what do I have? I'm going to Dream Seeker to draw a card. Let's see what do I want to do. I will play Root. And it looks like Whoa. I never I noticed these sure. little effects on the on some of these cards. Interesting. 
I wonder if anybody from Playtech Playdex in the chat and could speak to the this uh, this cool effect that's happening on my on these constructs. I think that's awesome. And is uh, there is it just for special cards that you've used, or is it for like the all faction cards? I'm interested to know. Just now, just now, gaining appreciation for this cool little thing. Ooh, a Dreamwalker, eh? Ooh. <laughs> Dreamwalker is a fun one. It's kind of like favorite. you know what's uh, what's in the bag, right? You, you exactly. don't know what you're gonna get until uh, you know. Until you... That's what I love. I love a what's in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, let's go. Three left, I guess. Let's go here, and I will just kill a cultist. All right. All right. Well, I'm. Going off, going as they off. say. Oh, yeah. I'm going to buy up some more Mechana uh, constructs. I am going to get this Warp Druid out of here. Not going to banish with it. Not going to bind it. Um, I got lucky. Jeez. Oh, it's all coming up. It's all coming up, Gary, today. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes even even I can win a game. And this is uh, real bad for me. <laughs> oh, it's only on only on the cool effects only on Pasithia's constructs. I love that. I think that's so cool. I did not I did not know about this until today. Shows you how yeah I need to play I need to play on the app more. All right, so I guess I can banish something here. I guess I'll get rid of an apprentice. This hand is uh, not good. It's not doing it. It's not. It's, it's, it's not it. Two heavies <laughs> and two ruins. So I didn't have oh, a white card in the green. Yeah. So oh no. I can't purchase anything to move the row. So. Oh, it's so brutal. Oh my yep. goodness. It's a three-point turn. Yep. With a, a banish. Yep. All right. Boy, oh boy. All right, let's hope for the best here. All right, I got lucky again. I managed <laughs> to unite it up and find two cards to banish. So yeah, it's just it's all it's all it's all coming up. Gary. It's all coming up, Gary. Today, don't mind if I do. Go ahead and buy a, another construct. Um, I'm not going to be able to defeat a monster even if I grab two heavy infantries here, so um, it's going to have to be a pair of mystics. Um, pair of mystics here. Um, I'm going to transform my void cycler. Oh, goodness. So That's now nice. I have two honor, two runes. My goodness, it's just all happening, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Playing okay. playing in real life is way cooler. Um, I think in some ways yes, in some ways no, right? Uh, it of course there's no substitution to getting together with your friends, but uh, the speed of the app is fantastic. I mean, you can play a game in no time versus you know getting a game off your shelf, um, you know opening it up, shuffling, setting it up, not to mention getting together. So I, there's no substitution for that. But uh, man, is it nice to have this app to be able to play. All right, so I think I'm going to transform my Demon Hunter. It's a little late for this, but... Um, mm -hmm. So now I've got seven power. Could make you discard a card at random. True, true. Which, uh, for two points, but I don't think that's right at the moment. So yeah. Hit, like a Unite card. Yeah, I guess you have banished quite a bit. Yeah, I'm just going to go with... Uh, let's see, maybe I should purchase something first in case something juicy comes out. Okay, so I've got... Oh, yeah, i got a Banish card for my hand. Um, I think I can just pass right now. Yeah, you can say none for sure. Yep. 
Yeah, it's getting late in the game. I just need points now. So let's see what we can do. Um, I've got seven power and I've got two, five, six, seven, eight purchase or eight ruins. Sorry. All right. I guess I should keep one in case another banish card comes up. Hello, Ender Wolf. Welcome to uh, to this uh, little live stream here. Um, hope you enjoy what you get to see. Um, are you familiar with Ascension? Um, are you if if you are, are you familiar with Deliverance? Let us know. Um, and uh, is the oh you're asking is uh, this the same mobile version or is it different in PC? It is. They are. Uh, you can play either of them, and they're you can cross play on them. I actually think Jason is on his uh, iPad right now, but uh, mm -hmm. I think there might be some differences, maybe in UI, UX, uh, you know, button functionality, stuff like that, maybe. But uh, I mean, the game rules play the same, and the game plays great on all these platforms. So, in uh, in the ways that it matters most, it's the same. All right. Um, all right. I'm actually taking taking a turn off here, pretty much. Oh uh, wow! Really? Seven runes and two power. <laughs> um, so oh. let's just convert to some points. It's the point conversion game. Ooh, a phantasm, and that actually unites for me. Cool. Um, oh, I don't have. I'm like, why can't I do this? It's like, well, I don't have four. I don't have four insight. I guess. Uh, silly. All right, I'll buy it instead. Um, and that's all I can do in my turn. All right, we'll dream seeker. Interesting. Uh, so I guess I'm gonna transform my witching ranger. Witching ranger. So yeah, transform. All right, transforming some cards. Yeah. Okay. So then I can play this and banish your card. Uh, Let's see. Ah, you've played Ascension in real life and the mobile app. Uh, is Deliverance an expansion? Yes. Deliverance is one of, uh, uh, on the app, it's one of the 14 now available uh, standalone expansions. We have up to 16 in physical form uh, that you can find out in stores and stuff. Um, but yeah, Deliverance is standalone. It plays by itself, and it can also be mixed and matched with any other Ascension product. So um, it's an Ascension expansion. It, inter it plays with a special resource that you've probably not seen if you've only played the base set. It is called Insights, this orange egg. And with this orange egg that you can store from turn to turn, there's a ton of different things you can use it on. And that's kind of the crux of this expansion. Sometimes you transform cards with it. Sometimes you bind monsters into your deck for further use. Um, there are all sorts of things you can use Insight on in this expansion. Okay, let's kill your Emma Void Psych. Emma's hey! Cycler. Not nice. Uh, okay, so I still have five ruins. Yes, so if, you, uh, if, you, if you go into the app, uh, the Ascension app, you should be able to see this expansion in the store and give it a go. I highly recommend it. Uh, I think it's going to be well worth, in terms of hours of enjoyment, to dollars spent, it's gonna it can be really high up there uh, for for people if you like the game Ascension. I think Deliverance right. is a lot of fun. No more honor in the honor pool, so this is yeah. it. Yeah. So Jason just uh, depleted the honor pool for the two player game that we had sixty to start with. Now it's all gone. I still get to take my last turn because I went second, um, and so I'm gonna see just how many points I can score this last turn. And it's not going to be a crazy wild unite fest. It looks right, like, then but it might uh, be closer. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna phantasm this invocest. So that's actually. And do I just go for the dread mage? Yeah, I go for the. I just go for gold here, right? I mean, we go for gold, right, everybody? Absolutely. I mean, and this sometimes you get paid. Um. All right, up to two insight now. I think it's just points. I think it's just converting all my resources here into points. I'm going to buy a Nile Bomber. 
I'll buy a fairy commander. I have uh, oh. one insight short of transforming wow. my other construct, which would have been sweet. But I'll activate my tra uh, my teletransmitter for an honor, and uh, that's it. So we're going to get to see the final score. 99 to 89. And I say, Ooh, I, I do say, Jason, came out. Yeah. I do um. say, um, you know, that's, uh, that's, um, you know, that's, uh, that's quite the, um, quite the close game, all things considered. I think if you're watching that game, um, you oh, might I almost grabbed it at the end. Yeah. 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 You, you, you had, had a lot of off at the very end. Yeah. You uh -huh. get to, yeah, it was a little unlucky in the beginning by getting my, my banishing card was the last card of my deck, which is standard usually when you buy a banishing card in round one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah. You you kind of sacrifice initial power for hopefully that long term game gain, which you know your average turn was. My spikes were really high. I had crazy turns, mm -hmm. um, and then I had off turns right when I wasn't uniting um, my lifebound cards. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, you just kind of had consistently high resource, high output mm -hmm. turns there. Um, but yeah, good. thanks. Close. Yeah, GG, close. man. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, uh, I'm going to look over here at the chat now. You have any? If you have any questions, now's even the, the perfect time. I'm going to be, I'm not focusing on the game anymore. Um, if you have any questions for me or Jason, um, like I said, I was a lead designer on Deliverance. Jason was a lead developer on most of our games of the last three, four years. So um, definitely, you know, if you have questions, uh, feel free. We're going to be chilling for another 10 minutes or so. Um, oh, your daughter loves skulls and sails. That's so cool to hear. Um, yeah, we, we actually just released. It's, it's hard to get a hold of because of the shipping situation in the world right now. But it's called Curse of the Golden Isles. Um, and actually, um, our company Stoneblade has a Twitch uh, a Twitch account. So if you go look at Stoneblade Twitch, actually yesterday we streamed Skulls and Sails on Tabletop Simulator. So if you want to check it out and your daughter loves Skulls and Sails, she'll probably love Curse of the Golden Isles because it continues the pirate ship um, mechanics and it adds some stuff to that. So um, yeah, I would. Yeah, it'd be great if you grabbed the game on Steam. Um, it does. It's really fun on PC. I love it. I uh, oftentimes I'll get into it. I'll have a bunch of games going with people in the community, um, and different uh, different people. Um, yeah, and uh, we are uh, all of us here at the company have at uh, one time or another been an MTG player, but it's been a while since I've played. Jason's an old school MTG fella. One of the OGs. Yeah. Yeah, my DCI number was actually four digits, so <laughs> <laughs> four numbers. <laughs> yeah, mine had a lot more digits than that. I didn't yeah. get into it until, you know, about uh, Onslaught block, so way after you. Oh, cool. I'm glad you, gra you grabbed the stream uh, with the Curse of the Golden Isles. Yeah, the, the tabletop simulator <laughs> app, uh, or a tabletop simulator version of Ascension ha does not hold a candle up to the actual app version, but it you know for now it, it it'll manage uh, it's it's worth it it's 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 fun to be able to play and stream so um but yeah i'm going to pull up some deliverance cards here cuz we're talking about deliverance i can just uh, get more questions talk about cards i'll start with the monsters just because i love dreambind um so we had this cool named uh, K Cairo or Cairo, you'd have to ask George how he intended it to be pronounced, but it's this cool, uh, you know, usually we'll name a character if it's only one copy in the deck. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this is a good example of like an effect that we usually don't let you just blow up your opponent's con constructs on repeat in your deck. They're usually only monster effects. So the Desert Breaker is a fun one to get your opponent's, uh, your opponent's constructs. The Dread Mage is just good value. Love the Dream Tyrant art. It's a cool little, like, treant fella. Night Marauders, we saw some of those. Oh, this is Nilia. Really cool Dreambind monster. If you can get it early in the game, it can get kind of wild. You're just taking cards from your opponent's uh, hands at, uh, all the time. <laughs> you always thought that the cultist looked like a friend of yours. That's That's pretty funny. I don't know if they would if they would be happy with you saying that, but ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Nilia, nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're you've got my delay, yeah. So I'm just gonna 
I think there's probably a five or six second delay. Sure. Um, yeah. Lots of fun ones. I, I'm just trying to make sure if there's anything cool that we didn't... Uh, ooh, the Dartha. Um, eight cost hero. Um, when you play it, you acquire a card in the center row without paying its cost and put it in your hand, and it's a nine cost dream bind. This one... This dream... Or sorry, it's a nine cost phantasm. Uh, the phantasm for Dartha is, can be wild right because you can mm -hmm. you can put in another giant monster or giant hero into your hand if you if you're playing with delirium there's a whole cycle of of uh high cost um um heroes that are really really powerful like the enlightened emery and the um yeah the the lifebound core the uh the Dartha Mecha, Mecha Monk uh, in Mechana. So if you pair it, the, the Dartha in Deliverance can be pretty wild. Pretty wild. Hi, sorry if this is an FAQ. Is Skulls and Sales expansion scheduled to come out on phone PC port? We currently have no nothing to share on that front. Uh, so nothing scheduled or planned or anything like that. If we have uh, updates and news, we will let you know as soon as we do. Um, but yeah, nothing to really, nothing to announce or talk about at the moment. Yeah, this has been this has been fun. I hope I hope all of you who have either you know uh, watched this on playback uh, or uh, the handful of you here uh, hanging out with us live had some fun. Um, it's uh, it's always fun to play to play uh, some of our our games that we've we're, we're usually working on games that we're making you know to come out in the future right that's our job is to usually design new stuff and hope that people will enjoy it down the line when it comes out um, it's always fun to be able to play an old game and not even that old right it's pretty new uh, but for us it's a little bit you know blast from the past um, talk about it and experience it again. Um, the app just does such an amazing job of um, of making these sets available and quick to play, and it's just so awesome to be able to play um, our Ascension sets like this. <laughs> Your daughter always asks, "What about the head uh, of uh, the head of that Lifebound fairy?" Uh, oh, is it the? Are you ask, talking about the del uh, the Delirium character? Um, yeah, we kind of we ended up with a pretty interesting art piece for that one, but it was a uh, somebody who had um, won a uh, an art piece to, to for one of the for them to be on an art piece in Ascension. They chose their daughter to be um, a fairy, um, and yeah, it. Some people have interesting comments about it, but I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I love the art. Love the art in. Um, especially in Delirium and Deliverance. I think George Rockwell did such a fantastic job um, envisioning this art and designing these characters. Like, There's just a lot of cool stuff that you wouldn't think. Like this Control Smith, I think it's just a really cool character. It shows this woman, like, you know, she's building this device that she can control this mech with her with her armor here. I think it's just so such a cool... George just does such a good job of thinking about characters and cool ways of showing things that I think I, I wouldn't on my own, right? I wouldn't think of, uh, but it's also not lacking in just really cool looking characters. Love this Naka piece. Uh, Rod Mendez is the artist's name. He's fantastic. And I thought when, when we saw this one, we were blown away. Just the perspective and the action that was shown in this, in this piece. It's one of my favorites that we've ever, 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 ever had in, in Ascension. So any other questions? Any comments? Um, love to hear from from you all in the in the chat. It's been fun. Uh, you know, the handful of you that have been chatting, this it's been great. Thank you so much. Thank you for so much for chatting and engaging in the game with us. We really appreciate it. Jason, any any thoughts? Any parting wisdom? Uh, <laughs> how do you feel no. about how do you feel about today? No, it's just super rewarding. This is nice to actually, you know, to play a game that we worked on so long ago. And I just remember even in the midst of playing this, you know, I think we might have spent a little more time that was necessary because we were actually enjoying playing the set mm -hmm. so much. We were a little guilty of it. So this is definitely one of my favorite sets. 
Uh, I think it was interesting, like uh, the design choice. I don't. I'm trying to remember how we came up with the concept of Pasithia. I think maybe talking about that a little bit could be interesting. Yeah, I. You know, it's funny. A lot of times, right? You we're in groups, right? I. You. I've said a few times, and I am proud to say that I was the lead designer of the set. But that, I think, a lot of people hear that and say, like, "Oh, you came up with everything." It's like, no. No, look in the credits. There, there are a bunch of people that helped, that worked on game design and development for each Ascension set, and uh, and everybody contributes. And it, it's almost impossible with a team to have too many things that are just, oh, this is all this one person, right? Oh, all the lead designer came up with every aspect of this. I think it's a misconception in board games. Um, it's a team effort. I can't even remember. I mean, there might be a cards in here, like the Psyche Ascara that I have up. I remember coming up with this card idea and being super happy with it because it was a new type of Ascara. It worked really well with Dreambind monsters, but you didn't have to Dreambind monsters to make it work. I just, I, so like, you know, there are cards in here that, that are my cards and worked out and were great. There are cards in here that were, I had nothing to do with, right? Because we're doing file reviews. We're talking about the set. What does Lifebound need? What is McKenna doing? And people, you know, we're, we're throwing out ideas. We're talking about the game. And it's just not really important at the end of the day who came up with what idea. And this is all to say, I don't remember how Pasithia came about. I really oh, don't. I, I, yeah, I, I remember recalling like we were just trying to think of you know other other things we could do with, mm -hmm. with the resource insight, right? And I thought it was you for sure. That's like, well, what if we just summoned this really awesome, you know, awesome card from outside the game? And I was like, and it, you know, that was the concept initially. And I, we all just said, wow, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. And then I remember also we ended up you know getting the constructs in there to make it cheaper. But it yeah. was it kind of was mind blowing. And I was like, oh, that sounds sweet. And it was kind of innovative and something we hadn't done before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pasithia is a character from the original Dreamscape, and I think I, I think I had a different Pasithia in the set, and we ended up w scrapping it and moving towards something else. And they this uh, Pasithia has a weapon from each faction, and yeah. uh, so th I thought it really came together really really well. Like mm -hmm. oh, there are these all faction constructs that um, that you know the idea is that if you're collecting her weapons, that you can like she's going to come to you right like the story of Pasithia coming back to the dreamscape to help us escape was the story and mm -hmm. her her wep her be she was she had been she's she's missing is the story of delirium and deliverance nobody knows where Pasithia is she's the guardian of the dream world and then in deliverance uh you you're just finding her weapons all over the place like what's going on why are these weapons why are Pasithia's weapons scattered around and ultimately it helps you get the favor of and recruit Pasithia to your team, which I think is really cool. All right. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, it's so so fun to deep dive. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, we're, our scheduled time here is, is come to an end. Um, and we really appreciate um, all of you hanging out. And if you're watching down the line on playback, um, I hope this was enjoyable for you too, even though you can, didn't get to chat with us live. Um, Definitely, uh, you know, uh, check out Playdeck. They have a lot of cool apps. Um, they have a lot of really great stuff. Um, check out the Ascension app if you haven't. Um, it's great. Um, and you can get it on Steam. And you can get it on other platforms as well. And, uh, yeah, support uh, support us and our game if you like it. Uh, we really appreciate it. We love having more players. Um, yeah, and... Uh, Thank you so much for uh, for hanging out with us and watching us play our game. Uh, yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Gary, thanks for uh, giving me a little bit of a beat down here. <laughs> <laughs> you made it close. You made it close. Yeah. I knew you would. People thought, <laughs> oh, you know, I'm just I'm just giving lip service. I was, no, Jason's going to make it close. Uh, All do right. you want to link our Discord? Or is that... Uh... Yeah, yeah, we have a Discord. Um, I hope it's not against the rules. Uh, I, I w if you want more information and you want to chat with us and ask us about our it. games, uh, yeah. we have a Discord. It's a Stoneblade uh, Entertainment Discord. You can find us there. Um, and uh, yeah, it, cool. it, we we play with people there. Uh, we try out our new games there. We announce when we have stuff coming out on the app. It's a great way to get information about Ascension and our other games as time goes on. And we're in there. I mean, that's our work hub. We're in there working. So, um, yeah. There's also a Discord server for Ascension specifically that's run by mm -hmm. the community. They run tournaments all the time through the app. 
absolutely recommend going and checking out the Ascension, uh, the Ascension specific Discord. Um, and yeah, I'm in there as well too. I, I like to play tournaments every so often, and it's a blast. Um, it's an absolute blast to to play Ascension uh, with other people and meet new friends and stuff. So um, yeah, check us out, uh, and uh, hope to see, uh, see see you all around in the future.